Okay, so, uh, hello, welcome back. Um, so I did not realize that this is going to have six chapters. Um, I think I got thrown off because if I remember correctly, Claude's only had uh, five chapters. Maybe it's six, I can't remember. But, um, okay, so, my prediction for this chapter, this final chapter, I want everyone to leave their comment box down below before they finish watching this. Like, what do you think is gonna happen? I'm hoping personally for a proposal. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but um, I also think Rod's gonna be a little jealous because Emily's gonna go, or I think Rod's gonna go to Brigantia and Lance is gonna stay with Emily. <sighs> I want to see Emily and work Lance together. They are so cute, and I just, oh my god. I don't know. I kind of, what I kind of wish is that like. The other male leads were when I found someone um, when they aren't with Lucette. But I mean, I get it because, you know, this is a love game, they're yours, blah blah blah. Anyway, uh, I've been talking for a very long time. Let's get right into this. <laughs> The dining hall is lively this morning, though for an entirely different reason than usual. So, just to be clear, this exchange program you're proposing isn't actually an exchange program? <laughs> I think that was obvious, darling. So, why call it an exchange program at all? Because it sounds more educational that way. It's early in the morning and we're all gathered in the dining room with the Brigatti and Princess discussing Rod's impending stay in Brigatti. A few weeks ago, Rod agreed to return with Claude to Brigantia to begin learning dance there. I had not realized he was so invested in the art. And now I'm second guessing if I should go. Lance clears his throat. If I can answer any questions to ass assuage your worries, please let me know, Prince Rod. But I know for a fact my family would love to have you. Naturally, we love to entertain guests. And so the banter continues. I glance across the table at Lance and Emily and her speaking in hushed whispers. Lance has a soft smile on his face and Emily is laughing. At least the two of them are subtle and do not serenade each other in the halls. Which, speaking of serenading, I glance at the entrance. This morning, Chevalier said he had a patient to attend to. He left early, but he's still not returned. I hope he's not writing himself dry. That, unfortunately, seems to be something we have in common. Though, Chevalier is getting better at managing his workload. The council meetings he now frequently attends only serve to make his schedule more chaotic. I'm happy he's mainly with more nobles and participating in more past events, but I still worry that he's overworking himself. Breakfast tea is served, and by the end of it, Chevalier still hasn't shown up. I have just snuck another glance at the doors when Claude leans over. I was worried my dog was trying to, like, I don't know, dig through the board. Dig through the board. Now he's just stretching. It takes forever to stretch. Anyway. Pining after someone, are we? Pining is for people who aren't courting someone, Claude. People like you. You could kill a man with your words, princess. If you're so easily defeated by my words, then perhaps you should invest in better armor for your heart. <laughs> Got him! I stand with a sigh. For some reason, Claude is smiling at me. What? Oh, nothing. I was just thinking about how very much I'm looking forward to dinner tonight. See you later, princess. He walks off with a strange, self-satisfied smirk, leaving me to look after him puzzled. I shake off my bafflement, and after excusing myself, trail him through the sooner I stepped outside, however, that I met my familiar face. My lovely Lucette. I stumbled back, startled. Chef, where have you been? I'm sorry, my sweet. I need some extra time to prepare things. I gave him a critical look. You said you were handling things with a patient. I wasn't. I didn't lie. But that doesn't mean I wasn't preparing something else. A surprise for you. I'm getting nervous. Ah, don't be my princess. You're sure to love this. Chevalier reaches for my hand. I still have some work to do at the office. Care to assist me? And oh, would you mind if we drop by the tavern before the noon meal? I need to pick something up. I am more willing to consent to the end. Hopefully, 
This isn't another big good name after me. <laughs> I come to Sugarlage's office. It's a humble space cluttered with herbs and remedies and books. The sight of it makes me nostalgic. Years ago, I worked side by side with Shevlu, assisting him while he helped soldiers who had gotten caught up in the palace fighting. In fighting. I'm glad the work we do now is a different nature. Shevlin needs help reorganizing his shelves and filling prescriptions. The work is simple but time consuming. By the time we are out of the office, the sun is at its zenith. Shevlin is uncharacteristically quiet. Shev? I tug him to sleep. When he doesn't respond, I lean up to kiss his cheek. Oh, sorry, Lisa. I was just thinking. His words trail off as he looks at me. His gaze is so intense that for a moment I begin to worry, but when I reach out to cup his cheeks, he takes my hand and laces our fingers together. And then he smiles. Shev, is something wrong? No, it's quite the opposite, actually. I was just thinking about how incredibly lucky I am. To be your consort, to be able to do some good here, and he pauses and laughs. Listen to me, Cinema say I was rambling like an old man. You are an old man. It's a good thing. Maturity suits you. What a relief. He kisses my knuckles. Now, shall we drop by the tavern? We shall. The two of us make our way to the gates and then to the tavern. Shuffler's errands take no time at all. I wave him outside and minutes later, he emerges holding a picnic basket. The surprise is... a picnic? Indeed. Is this another date? Not just any day, they said. I'm going to make sure this is the best day you've ever gone on. He wraps out an arm. He wraps an arm around my shoulders and begins to walk me toward the forest. On our way there, we pass a crowd of cheering people. Waltz stands before them for the magic. As the audience claps and cheers, Waltz laughs and bows. His eyes stand on us with strings. Have fun, you two. He's gonna propose at the picnic! I can feel it. Chevrolet will brace back, and I'm too startled by the quickness of Walt's smile to react. My befuddlement falls away as we enter the serene quiet of the forest. A sigh escapes my lips before I can help it. I miss the walks we used to take here. I pause. Or the detours, as you call them. I had the same thought, which is why I thought maybe he'd prefer this to a cafe today. Here, I do not have to worry about being a princess. I do not have to worry about standing up for myself or for Chevalier. Though I do not think he needs me to do that for him, not anymore. I tell him this as we walk through the vibrant greenery. You seem more confident now. What can I say? You're an inspiration, princess. It is strange how when he says the words, he glances off to the side of the face, avoiding my eyes. You're acting strange. Chevalier's case flickers back to me. He smiles. I prefer mysterious. Chev. When my words collapse into a sharp inhale, Chevalier brings me to the part of the forest I've never seen before. The tranquil thicket filled with flowers. The sunlight streams through the canopies, brightening the green into a soft, sunny gold. In the center of the area is a simple single blanket. Ta-da! Welcome to the Prince's private court. What is this? Our own personal sanctuary. I happened to step upon it the other day. It's lovely, isn't it? It's beautiful. The quiet, broken only by the soft chirrup of birds, is so peaceful that it makes me smile. I lean out to kiss Chevalier on the lips before moving toward the blanket. I love it, Chef. Chevalier beams joins me with the picnic basket. I thought you might like to use it as a reprieve from court. Or, you know, if you wanted somewhere private to whisper sweet nothings to my ear. Is that all? <laughs> I elbow him in the stomach laughing. Perhaps. Chevalier sits at a quaint meal. There are small sandwiches, a simple salad, and unsurprisingly, the cursed lily platter. <laughs> These are the most popular biscuits in the kingdom now, you know. Of course they are. We discuss many things while we eat, ranging from Rod's departure to Emily's adoration, adoration of Lance to the more serious council meetings. The more we talk, the more I notice Chevalier beginning to drift off. Is he going to take a nap? Oh no. Before I know it, day passes in the night and the sunset is replaced with the shards of glittering moonlight. Chevalier is so quiet, I can hear myself think, which is alarming. A quiet creaking sound startles me from my thoughts, and I notice a bird has landed on the branch above us. 
but the distraction's brief. I turn back to Chevalier, who I notice is reading through the picnic basket. The troubled look on his face makes me pause. Chef? Where <laughs> Triumph's monthly lights his features. Aha! It happens in a flash. Chevalier plucks something from the basket and holds it up. His hand knocks into the bird roosting above us and it squawks and irritation and flies off. <laughs> oh. Chevalier freezes. A look of horror pauses over his face. Oh. He stands abruptly. No, no, no. This isn't for you, little bird. I follow his panic gaze to the bird, which is seated, settled in her nest a few branches higher. Something shiny gleams in its talons. Is that? Chevalier wrings his hands. God, this is a disaster. Maybe I should. Hmm. All at once, he seems to come to some decision. Without any explanation whatsoever, he turns to the tree and begins to climb. <laughs> this is a very memorable engagement. Chev? Don't worry about me, princess. Just getting. Shh. Just getting something important. Come, Sevilla, come, come. The bird flutters its wings as in preparation to fly off. I act on instinct, casting the fire magic that comes. First magic that comes to mind. The nearby branches shoot outward, encasing the bird in a cage entirely in my making. The bird chatters and flutters, but to no avail. It is already trapped by the time I snap my fingers and float the cage down to a swimming gust of wind. Chevalier drops to the ground. This that way, but I've already reached the cage with the glimmering object. It's so cute! The sight of the ring is so shocking, my mind goes blank. All I can hear is my heartbeat, which reverberates through my whole body. This. I must be cursed. This isn't how it's meant to go at all, but. I look up at Chevalier in wonder. He sits, sits before me, flushed and smiling, nervously. Glass has fallen off of his face. I do not realize I'm quivering until Chevalier reaches out to grab my hands over the ring. My beautiful, effervescent lucette. The wind beneath my sails, my guiding light, the queen. Chevalier's own hands are shaking with nerves, I realize. I've never seen him so anxious. I did not realize I'd cry until a tear rolls down my cheek. Chevalier wipes out to me, wipe it off my cheek. My beautiful ice princess. My one true love. Princess is set real of Do you do me the absolute honor of becoming my wife? Unless, of course, I'm unworthy, then I. Yes, yes, yes. My heart is thundering so loudly I can barely hear myself say the words. Chevalier's eyes light up. Truly? So I. I throw myself at him before you finish the sentence, knocking him down to the ground and sealing his lips with a kiss after kiss. I smile against Chevalier's lips. My happiness is untangible, burst from my lips with laughter. Laughed at, don't I? The whole thing wasn't very princely, was it? No, oh, it's perfect. I press my forehead and hands. I thought you meant that. I'm sorry for keeping you waiting, but you don't have to apologize. I would have been happy to be with you forever. There could not ever be anyone other than Chevalier, the man who has taught me how to connect with others, the man who taught me how to fix broken things, who taught me how important it was to love myself. The reason Claude and Walt are acting so strangely. Chevalier laughs. Yes, I'm afraid everyone knows but you. I spoke to Claude quite extensively about this whole thing. Oh, they're kind of... He worked so hard that they're kind of friends now, because like, if I remember correctly, the last one, uh, we both were around that thing, that they still are kind of like enemies, but I guess now they're like buddies, and that... Oh, that's so nice. That's so wholesome. So that's why he had that smug smile on his face. But I promise this is the only time I will ever share such a secret with others. I just like surprises. I know. And Father and Ophelia? Getting your father's blessing is the most stressful thing I've ever done in my life. I nearly fainted. I laugh. How appropriately dramatic. I kiss Chevalier again on the forehead, the nose, the lips. My lips linger for a long time before I eventually move away. It would be foolish to think this will be a long engagement. There are many things Chevalier will need to learn and many people will have to impress before you wed. It will be a tough road, but I'm grateful we can travel it together. Lucette? Yes? I love you more than anything in this world. I love you too. Forever and always. Forever and always, my dearest princess.
Chevalier whispers the promise onto my lips and seals it with a kiss. Mother used to tell me that fairy tale love did not exist, that us witches could not sustain ourselves off of such joy. But I know now that Mother was wrong. This feeling is what inspires me to fight another day. Chevalier is what inspires me to fight another day. And no matter the obstacles, I will never lose sight of that. I glance at the ring Chevalier slid onto my finger. It closes up with magic. It's perfect. This is perfect. Perhaps this is And their love lasted forevermore. <gasps> so cute. Oh. Well, I'm glad that ended where it did. Um, and uh, yeah, no, so what did you guys think of, of Chevalier's Proud? I want to say Claude's. I enjoyed it. Um, I am a little interested to see. Because it feels like, so far, I just played Claude and Chev's route, but... Chevalier, his out ended with them getting engaged. Claude's route ended with them at a different stage in their life. So uh, I am curious to see what happened with the other three bachelors. And uh, yeah, I will see you all in the next one. Thank you for stopping by, and I'll let you guys watch the ending credits. Enjoy. <laughs>